The Devil with Three Golden Hairs Long, long ago, in a small town, great luck had dawned upon a poor peasant couple. A son was born to them, with a mark of a scepter behind his left ear. The boy was prophesied for greatness. He would bring luck and fortune, not only to his parents, but to the whole town. It was also believed that as soon as he is old enough, he will be married to the king's daughter. They were destined to be together. The couple was overjoyed. When the king found out about the boy, he was very angry. How could a peasant's son marry his daughter, a princess? He disguised himself as a rich landlord and went to the peasant's house. Lying about being childless, he offered the parents two sacks of gold in return for their only child. The couple thought for a while. They humbly rejected the gold, but agreed to give up their boy. They knew that they were very poor to provide their child with what he deserved. The king took the boy and kept him in an unattended cart, which was leaving the town. He wanted to keep the boy away from his daughter. That stormy night, the king thought that he had changed destiny. But that was not to be. A while after the king had left, the child was found by a humble man. He and his wife had no children. They named the boy Leo and decided to raise him as their own. Years passed and Leo grew up to be a bright young boy. Once, as he was crossing the forest, Excuse me, sir. Would you know the way to the town of Hogs? Oh, that's easy. Take a left from that weird-looking tree there, and then... No! How can this be? I'd send him away! As soon as he is old enough, he will be married to the king's daughter. No, I will never let him marry my daughter. What do I do now? Wait! I have an idea. Ahem, <clears throat> ahem. Listen, boy, I have a very urgent royal message to be delivered to the queen in the palace. Would you help me? It is very, very important. Also, do not open the letter. Oh, I understand, your majesty. I will not open the envelope. I shall leave immediately. Oh, please do. The sooner you reach, the faster you will meet your destiny. <laughs> Leo began his journey, completely unaware that his quest had only begun. He rode for hours. The palace was only a few minutes away now. But suddenly, a snake appeared in front of the horse. Billy, stay calm! Where are you taking me? Billy, stop! By the time the horse stopped, Leo was deep inside the forest, far away from the castle. Thankfully, he found a small house. He got off his horse and knocked on the wooden door. Hello, my name is Leo. I was going to the palace to deliver an important message, but got lost on my way. Can I please stay here for the night? Hmm. It's a pleasant house. Thank you for letting me stay. You don't seem to know who I am. Oh, I do. You are Ginger. People in the town are very scared of you. They say you rob houses. Funny though, because they don't seem to know which house exactly you've robbed. That's because I haven't. Anyway, no matter what I say, be 
people will never believe me. It's probably the way that I look that scares them away. But why aren't you scared of me? Well, I love people. But I don't listen to everything they have to say. They say things about those they don't even know. I mean, you did let a stranger stay in your house for a night, didn't you? I think that's generous. Ginger was shocked. In all these years, nobody had ever been nice to him. Leo ate some food and went straight to sleep. Ginger found it strange that a civilian was asked to deliver a royal message. He noticed the envelope in Leo's jacket. Curious, he decided to open it. The carrier of this letter must instantly be thrown in the dungeon for life. Why would the king ask for something like that? The king is wicked at heart. Leo doesn't deserve this. Ginger tore away the letter. He wrote a new message on a fresh paper, put it in the royal envelope, and put it back where it was. The next day, when Leo reached the palace with the letter, The carrier of this letter should be married to the princess immediately. Call Princess Bella, please. Bella, your father wishes you to marry this young man. Do you agree? As destiny would have it, as soon as Leo and Bella looked at each other, they fell in love. I do wish to marry him, Mother. The Queen was very happy. The wedding took place the same day. Leo and Bella were very happy. But not for long. When the king returned, he was furious to find out what had happened. But it was too late. Leo was a prince now. The king couldn't possibly send his son-in-law to the dungeons. He thought of another plan. Oh, my heart breaks! I know I should have told you this before, but the princess is cursed to die on the seventh day of her marriage. Only and only one thing can save her. The devil's three golden hairs. I cannot force you to go. I will go. I won't let anything happen to my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Leo waved goodbye to his wife. His way to the devil led him to the large city. And as he tries to get in, the gatekeeper stopped him. If you want to enter, solve this riddle. Tell me, why our master's fountain that once gave us wine doesn't even give us even water anymore? Leo thought for a while. Um, I know the solution to your problem, but I can't give it to you right now. You see, I am on a very important quest, and I am told that the one who forces me to answer any questions before I complete my quest will be turned into a goat. What was your question again? Something about a fountain? Nope. <laughs> What's the hurry? Why don't you give me the answer on your way back? Oh, aren't you the most generous? Thank you, sir. Leo went ahead and came by another town. The gatekeeper asked, Tell me, why the tree, which once bore golden apples, now only has leaves? Leo gave the same reply and the gatekeeper happily let him in. Just as Leo thought that the array of strange riddles were over, he came across a ferryman who asked him another one. I will ferry you to the other side, but tell me this, 
I ferry people back and forth every day without any change in my work or life. How can I stop? Leo sighed and mentioned the goat to the ferryman. The ferryman naturally thought that being a ferryman for life was better than being a goat. He ferried Leo to the other side and waved him goodbye. Leo finally reached the devil's den. Outside, he saw that someone was trying to pick mangoes from a tree. Ahem. Ahem. Oh, sorry. I'm so sorry. I will not touch these mangoes. I promise. What? You are not my grandson? Phew. I thought it was the devil. Why are you here? The devil is your grandson? Oh, very well then. Could you tell me where he is at? I have to ask him three riddles. Leo narrated his entire story to the devil's grandmother. What? The king said that the devil's three golden hairs will lift the curse? <laughs> the king seems to be more wicked than my grandson himself. You innocent boy, your father-in-law wants you to get into trouble. That's why he sent you here. Wait, can this be? Here comes the devil. I would love to see what he does with you. <laughs> Leo was a sharp young boy. He thought for a while and made a deal with the grandmother. The grandmother was to save Leo and get the answer to the three riddles asked by the gatekeepers and the ferryman. In return, he would not tell the devil about his grandmother trying to eat mangoes. Hmm, you are smart. All right, deal. The devil's grandmother transformed Leo into an ant and kept him in her pocket. When the devil came, he was so tired that he went straight to sleep. Ah! Nana, what are you doing? Oh, what a terrible, terrible dream I had. I dreamt that there is a fountain which once had wine, but now it has nothing, not even water. That's because there is a big toad living under the fountain. Someone has to shoo him away. The wine will then start flowing. Good night now. After a while, as the devil was in sound sleep, his grandmother pulled another golden hair. Oh, what now? Oh, another one. There is this beautiful tree which bore golden apples and and now it has only leaves poor tree a rat is gnawing at its roots nana someone has to shoo away the rat oh all right will you go back to sleep i will try to sleep again no i know you will pull my hair again so here it is now i have no more hair for you to pull you happy? Um, well, I do have another riddle. What is it? <clears throat> Why can't the ferryman stop ferrying people back and forth? He doesn't want to do that. How does he stop? That's because the oar is cursed. He has to hand over his oar to someone to be free of it. Can I go back to sleep now? Oh, of course. Good night. The grandmother then transformed Leo back into his human form and handed over the three golden hairs to him. Leo bowed to her and quickly left before she changed her mind. Do you have the answer? Of course I do. But first, row me over. 
Once I reach the other side, I will give you your answer. The ferryman did what he was asked. Hand over the oar to someone and you shall be free. Goodbye now. On his way back, he met the second gatekeeper. My friend, there is a rat gnawing on the roots of the tree, which is why the tree isn't bearing golden apples. Happy, the gatekeeper went to the tree and shooed away the rat. The tree immediately bore golden apples. Rejoiced, the town gifted Leo with two sacks of gold. Now it was time to answer the first gatekeeper's question. There is a big toad living under the fountain. Shoo it away and the fountain will give you wine again. Oh, what a splendid fountain it was. That town too rewarded Leo with four sacks of gold. Leo accepted his reward and left for the palace. As the king saw Leo approaching with sacks of gold, he was overwhelmed with greed. Oh, oh, my son-in-law has returned. I was so worried about you. <clears throat> Tell me, where did you find this gold? Leo now knew how wicked the king was. There is a ferryman on the way to the devil. All you have to do is get on his boat, take his oar, and quickly row across. There are fields of gold on the other side. The king hurried off to the ferryman. Without thinking twice, he took the oar off the ferryman's hands. The ferryman danced with joy and left the king all alone. Meanwhile, Leo found all about his real parents. Both the peasant couple and the couple who took care of him were invited to the palace. The prophecy came true. Leo brought luck and fortune to the entire town. And as for the greedy king, it is believed that he still ferries back and forth all alone. For no one ever dared to take over the ore from him.